Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because I usually do talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And today's topic is Monsters of the Multiverse. This is a review of the Mordenkainen Presents Monsters of the Multiverse. Essentially, this is supposedly the second dedicated monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. We have had other books that had monsters in them, but they were a collection of other things as well. So you either see this as the second book or the fourth book in a series that has been going on for a while. Now, I'm going to say right now, I am going to flip through and show you everything as I discuss it because that's what I generally like to see when somebody else is doing a review and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for you, okay? Uh, first off, I do want to say that uh, my view of this book is affected by the fact that I have already got uh, a lot of the books that Wizards of the Coast has put out, okay? So firstly, my summary of this monster book. That could have been a great book and should have been an awesome book, and I wanted it to be fantastic. This book is in fact very lazy. I consider it substandard. Now I do not mean that the artwork is bad, or that the writing is bad, or anything like that, but I will explain. Give me time. I also consider this, the, a lot of this book to be quite boring. Uh, it's A lot of it's recycled, but more importantly, a lot of this book is actually now obsolete. Like literally, obsolete. Uh, this book is primarily a dungeon master tool, but it does include 33 playable races for character creation. Ultimately, the book was a designing strategy, uh, well, designed around marketing strategies to cash in on 2021 Christmas Rush. And, and unfortunately, the book missed the date that they needed to release it on due to printing and shipping issues, and therefore it wound up being released after the intended date. Uh, this book actually exists for Dungeons & Dragons Adventurers League Public Organised Network Gaming or Play. Uh, and this, the, why did they do this? Because it was getting out of control. Literally, things were definitely getting out of control. So I think part of the reason for this book existing is that. Is that. The designers also used this book to showcase how they would present future stat block um, design for the Monster Manual in 2024. Um, this look at the future design by Wizards of the Coast is rather concerning for me because Jeremy Crawford has stated this is the new monster stat block design method, but the monsters are actually very weak and quite boring. Uh, the book brings together two different hybrid books uh, into, into this, uh, and it's supposed to be designed around, I think, new Dungeon Masters rather than anything else. There are a couple of other books that are pulled from for the races, but ultimately in terms of monsters, we're only pulling from two specific books. The playable races, rebalancing the playable monster races has been achieved. But the updated races are, are different. Uh, will people still want to play these races? That's my question. Races have complete flexibility around all of the ability score increases as set out in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, personally, I would have preferred one of the ability score increases to be assigned to a specific ability when it made sense for the race's biology. I don't require it to have complete restriction, um, but I also think that they don't want complete flexibility either. All the major abilities for the races are built around using um, them a number of times equal to the proficiency bonus, and then you recharge those, uh, those features and get your proficiency bonus worth back on a long rest. Frankly, I don't care about that. Um, it's just a different form of tracking with an arbitrary determined uh, limit to it. Like it, it there's, there's no sort of mathematical thing beside it that says this is the best way to do it. Um, a standardized speed for all of the races doesn't make sense to me, but the designers are aiming to keep the, the party together, like so they're not spread out and avoid customer backlash. I think part of the problem with a lot of the design ideas behind there is customers not being happy with uh, the design of something, and so for if you make enough noise, then you change it. Uh, one of the things that really um, annoyed me, and this is not the case for every single race, but the playable kobold race has no pack tactics or light sensitivity. I expect if I'm playing one of the monstrous races that they actually perform 
mechanically like the monster and they don't here. <laughs> I mean, you might say they're very similar, but they just don't. Many of the playable monster races aren't like the monsters that they are based off mechanically. And I would have, I would have to say you have to do significant adjustments to have them resemble the original monster they were based off. Not all of the updated races have this issue. In fact, um, I would say there's probably only a handful amongst the 33 uh, races available. Will the updated race options replace the old ones? Absolutely, and it should be obvious that it was going to take place when it was first released. Uh, it was definitely going to do that. Uh, no playable races should be in this book, in my opinion. Uh, what should have been in this book for players, because you don't have to worry about getting players to buy monster books, they will do that. Uh, they should have included plenty of beasts, new beasts that weren't in the original monster manual and that were in the other books that were printed and creatures to summon and uh, beasts or creatures that they can transform into or use as familiars or as animal companions. That would have been the smartest move rather than including um, playable race options in my opinion. The monsters. Almost all of the monsters in the book are repeated from Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. What this book should have included was every monster from the Dungeons and Dragons 5e supplements not in the monster manual in my opinion. Like all of the pages that we used for the playable races should have been dedicated to including them and, and if they couldn't get them all in they should have picked the best ones. The only new monster in here is the Dolphin Delighter, which is quite stupid, it's unexciting, it's not really wanted, did anybody actually want it, it's not needed, it made me very angry that it was in fact included when I could have thought of many other monsters that they had that would have been far more interesting to include in this book. Alignment has been listed as typical for a creature rather than just being spelled out, this is how it is, which is fine because people change these anyway. <laughs> The proficiency bonus is now listed on the stat block, which can help if you don't know how to figure out the uh, the monster's bonus or um, proficiency bonus by looking at uh, the table in the Dungeon Master Guide. So that's fine. I don't think it was a big issue. A few monsters have a reduced list of uh, damage resistances that can't be avoided by making magical attacks. So um, if they had damage resistances in the past, a lot of them have been reduced, so there is fewer of them. But what I did like about you know, the fact that damage resistance for some of these monsters, you can't um, avoid that damage resistance. You can't um, circumvent damage resistance by wielding a magical weapon or making magical attacks. I like the concept the designers were going for. I just think the application was rather tame. Most of the monsters are short on hit points. Some are as much as 100 hit points when I compared them with the table that apparently the mass is revolving around. So I did some calculation, try to figure it all out, and that's a lot of hit points to be short on. Many of the creatures need the damage per round doubled rather than having what they have. They just don't do enough damage. Monsters with spell-like abilities that aren't considered spells is confusing and can be count, uh, can't be counterspelled, which will annoy players, and it's really kind of inconsistent. Um, this is a feature that I've seen in 4e, and uh, the intention behind it was to actually make it easier to figure out how to use their main attack, you know, if they had a spell. Like, this is the one they're probably going to use the most. Let's explain it and put it, include it into the stat block so they don't have a look it up. Uh, magic resistance doesn't work the same way as, as explained in the... Uh, original monster manual and that will generate confusion by having different types of magic resistance with different kind of mechanics for, for all your monsters that's a bad idea some monsters have been given bonus um, bonus actions that can be used on the same turn which just really required the monsters to have access to more than one action like monsters don't have to fire and follow the same rules as the player characters okay <laughs> you can just say okay we're going to give them more than one action and then let that happen. There have been minor changes to the monster stat blocks which are inadequate in my opinion to compete with the new player character options available now. Uh, stat block design is meant to include a big improvement. Apparently there was supposed to be a big improvement because everybody was um, crushing the monsters. 
but it hasn't occurred and it appears to be making 4e mistakes now if you've never played 4e you won't know what i'm talking about but i can assure you there are a lot of mistakes in terms of design here monster lore is a mixed bag there are some cases where there are no changes um, some monster lore has been reduced uh, some has been slightly adjusted or altered which is fine and some has actually been expanded much to my surprise it really shows the designers of this book don't want to add more story to the monsters, just rewrite, reduce uh, what has already been created in the past. Ultimately, if you look at the book overall, they haven't really expanded that often. It has happened, but not that much. The book reeks of probably the worst type of monster book design I have seen. Large stat blocks, um, smaller art I, I always felt like it was smaller art, but actually when you compare it to the original books, it's not really small, it's just my imagination maybe. Uh, minimal lore, and really when I say the worst type of monster um, book design, I'm talking at 4E. 4E has got to, got to be have some of the worst monster books that, out, that have ever been made by any com um, company, whether it's TSR or Wizards of the Coast. Overall, the stat blocks are significantly weaker than the quick monster created table uh, which is in the Dungeon Master Guide, which means that a Dungeon Master will need to make major adjustments to the creatures for them to be a challenge for your players. And that's unfortunate. Now the formatting and layout of this book. The cover is kind of an odd collection of a wizard, uh, which is Mordenkainen, and an, an Astral Dreadnought, and a Kyrene, which I didn't really see as a... Is that a good combination? The interior artwork looks recycled from the first printing for Dungeons and Dragons 5e with a few additions. Like there's a lot of art here that is definitely um, recycled, which is fine. You know, if you it, it's expensive, um, they have definitely added additional art that was not there before, which is always nice to see. I didn't find the Tasha's or Mordenkainen quotes entertaining, educational or even fun or funny, uh, but instead rather annoying and kind of like a waste of space. They use a lot of space for that stuff. There is only a contents page in this book, there is no index, but in this case, it doesn't need it. And that's fine, I, uh, this is one time where I'm not going to give Wizards of the Coast a hard time because they don't have an index, because this book doesn't need it, it's all in the contents page. The appendix with the monster lists for challenge rating, monster type and environment is, a, is reasonable information, I actually thought they did a good job, I thought that was a smart idea. Organising the monsters alphabetically is also smart design uh, conceptually, but it will confuse some people who are looking up demons and devils who don't actually specifically know the name of the demon or devil, and they were just looking for a demon and devil, and then they go through the demon and devil section to find what they wanted. <laughs> Deciding to remove the bolded text that indented the monster law was a mistake in my opinion, because it did make it easier to read. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is signalling with this um, this book a new ed edition, okay? Uh, it was obvious when I saw it come out, I knew this was going to happen. But also a new focus on moving away from the Forgotten Realms to multiple worlds. Uh, not just multiple wor worlds and a multiverse, but also including a lot of Magic the Gathering. I expect to see a lot of that in the future. Who is the book designed for? This book is for collectors. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League organised public games. Uh, there aren't enough player options for it to be worth a player to purchase, with really only maybe 25, 26 pages of um, playable races in here. And even if you look at the beasts and creatures, there's only a few beasts and creatures they could use in this book, unfortunately. This appears to be a beginner's Dungeon Master monster book. Till you realise how much work it will create for them in the long term. Initially when they run these monsters they probably won't notice anything. Uh, but then they will actually have to make adjustments. Experienced Dungeon Masters will hate this book. Because they'll know how much work they have to go, um, go to to actually fix a lot of the stuff. If you don't have Volo's Guide to Monsters or Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. You might love this because you won't know what you're missing, uh, frankly. So if you've never picked up those books, never seen them you won't know that you're actually missing out. The monsters in this book are already obsolete in my opinion, and they have been for some time, and will be obsolete for sure in 2024. 
possibly the races as well. I don't think that the races presented here will be suitable for 2024. Particularly with all the changes occurring with 1D&D and the new version of Dungeons and Dragons coming. So my summary for this book. Dungeon Masters have lost access to monster layer information, layer maps, monster tactics, monster roleplay advice, minions, monster story and treasure that they would have. Players of characters have lost race story, lore suggestions and uh, character race concepts that they could have included when they were creating their character. With everything that has been removed, condensed or changed, people would be actually foolish not to give Wizards of the Coast double the money they're asking for for this gem of a book that they have created. Can I just say, this is not a good book. And I'm really sad to say that that is the case. I was expecting a lot more from Wizards of the Coast and I just did not get it. And we deserve more. We have seen third party publishers do far better than this and Wizards of the Coast are, are experts. They should be able to handle doing this without ballsing it up. And I feel like this is a missed opportunity big time. Now please let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this book, uh, if you have anything you would like to add, and hey till next time, keep rolling those 20s.